Hi, I'm James and welcome to another review. We're looking at another of the Twilight 2000 community products. Uh, we're looking at Molnir by Tom McCready, uh, who we've come across before. Uh, did an excellent one about um, boats in Sweden, which I'll link to in the description. Now, this one's a little bit more expensive. It's $7.93 for a 13-page um, supplement. So it's a bit higher than what we've been we've been paying in the past. Um, now it's an interesting little setup. It's a, f a village um, with f few American troops in and we're not talking big numbers of, of people. We're talking six intact buildings. There's a nice description of the of the of the village um, and the troops defending it but they're being plagued by a sniper. Sniper is using a 14.7mm um, anti-vehicle rifle or anti-material rifle depending on what area you're looking at it from and this is giving them a lot of problems. They're pinned down, um, suffering badly. So that's the basic setting. Um, now the setting itself does need um, to be very specific. It's a winter setting which is a bit of an odd one given that the a Time Twilight 2000 set. Um, the full conversion notes for use for Sweden and in fact in many ways it would probably work better in Sweden with the snow. Uh, so you, you have got that. Uh, I can see this working nicely in a campaign in Norway as well. Uh, um, in the second edition or first edition it would probably work nicely in that setting. Now there's some extra bits of equipment in the in the in the supplement. Uh, there's the AKS 74U, uh, which was the shortened rifle, um, almost a submachine gun level. That's a very useful addition. The NRS2 survival knife, the infamous um, Soviet Spetsnaz knife that actually has um, a single shot pistol built into it. Probably not something I'm going to use a lot, but uh, hey, it's there. And they introduce Molnir, which is a uh, hand-built Soviet anti-material rifle. Now, yeah, I can see the logic for it. I'm not entirely sure that 14.5mm um, ammunition is actually appropriate for that, because the, as far as I'm aware, there are no match versions. Uh, I personally would probably just use the V94 in 12.7mm uh, which was the precursor to the OSV96. Now that's got the benefit, that's a genuine weapon. Um, it's not going to take a lot to, to modify the statistics for it. Uh, and then you've got a weapon that um, is actually genuinely used. The NPCs are nicely done. I quite like the, the detail on the NPCs. Um, some of it will probably never ever be used. The some of the motivations for the Spetsnaz sniper will probably never come out. Um, which is a real shame because I quite liked what um, Tom's done with that. I think that's a really nice idea. So. Those are the positives. Now I do have a couple of negatives with it and they're both to do with maps. There is no map of the village. Uh, the village is nicely described. I think some of the defences have probably been done very quickly. Um, I'm very impressed how quickly they've actually built it up to this level. Um, but I really think it needs that map so that you can actually, vi actually visualise it. And the trekking down the sniper. Now it gives three positions that the sniper is believed to be firing from. Now the problem with those is two of them are three kilometres away and one is two kilometres away from the village. Let's be generous and knock that down a little. Let's say they're firing from the edges of, edges of the hexes. That still means that the shots are at tremendous distances. Now I've done a bit of distance shooting myself and you would struggle to get hits at that distance. Um, it's just not feasible. 
Uh, if you want some good technical detail on how difficult it is to shoot at that distance, I'd suggest going and reading Shadow of a Babylon by David Mason, which has got some very uh, interesting accounts. And it emphasises the, the difficulty of first shot hits at that sort of distance. Also, this is through woodland. Trying to get a line of sight through the woodland, I would have thought would be very, very difficult. Um, so I think I'd probably, I'm probably going to have to change that slightly. Um, so that the map that comes with it is effectively useless. I think making it so there are more open sight lines. Um, hills can, can be used to, to achieve that. Uh, gaps. It's very difficult because you really, I think, need the sniper a lot closer. Being realistic, you'd be struggling a lot of the time at, at a thousand meters. Um, it's not so much the the weapon; it's the it's so many other factors. You're talking things like accurate range estimation. You're talking um, temperature, wind all the things that you, you may struggle with. Actual difference in height between fire and target. The bullet drop at that sort of distance is so massive on a single factor. Um, it, I, it, I'm going to struggle to make it realistic. I would probably go for a shorter distance. Um, if you wanted to, I suppose, ease up a little bit on the player characters, I think changing it to an SVD Dragunov sniper rifle, uh, firing at probably five, six hundred meters. And the emphasis is shouldn't be on the shooting skill. It really needs to be on the field craft skill. It's the putting yourself into a position where you're very, very hard to see. Firing that shot, moving position, using the skill base from that. Uh, again, if, if you want a good novel to get sort of some idea, uh, Holding the Zero by Gerald Seymour is another good one I'd recommend for that. So, for this one, I'm not as keen on. It, the gist of the scenario and the village defenders are good, but this time I think it's going to take a bit more work to make this a bit more playable. Uh, hope you found that useful and I'd, I'd be interested to hear any feedback you have on that. Um, please put your comments below and I'll see you soon for another review.